Welcome to Mohobe Nuggets of Wisdom podcast. My name is Mumpulu Kiluruma Mohobe. Our objective is to enthuse, inspire, energize, and empower entrepreneurs and entrepreneurs of all stripes here in BW and beyond. We do so by inviting these entrepreneurs and entrepreneurs into our makeshift studio. Sometimes we call them to the restaurant, sometimes we go uh, to our studio and we ask them to share their experiential knowledge, their experiences and their expertise. And we ask them uh, as many questions as we can aimed at empowering you also as a viewer. Hello, dear viewer, dear listener. My name is Mumpulu Kiluruma Mohobe. I welcome you to yet another exciting, invigorating episode of Mohobe Nuggets of Wisdom podcast. It's a show where you learn everything there is to learn about empowerment, about uh, entrepreneurship, and we certainly do our best to uh, give you life-changing business information. Today, we're going to talk about paradigm shifting and paradigm shift using the story of my guest as, a, as an example. And my guest is none other than Mr. Cabello Romeo Brown. Uh, welcome to the studio. Era, thank you so much, Ray Mokobe. Yeah, Era. we know we know how busy you are. And it's always a privilege that you can take time out to come in and be with us. Would you share your background with the viewer? Tell them a little bit about yourself and what you do professionally. Um, thank you, Ray Mokobe, like I said. Um, it's indeed a privilege and an honor to be here today. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, Kibidua Kabel or Romeo Brown, as, as it has been um, alluded. Mm. Um, in terms of background, I'm, I've done a little bit of everything. You know, I always say to people, I'm one of the most privileged people because um, I've done motivational speaking, I'm a corporate MC, I've worked in the corporate world, the likes of Avis, British American Tobacco, um, Motor Holdings, the, the, the Isuzu dealership. Mm. Um, now I'm an entrepreneur. You I'm, also I'm, at Avis. I, I was at Avis at, at one point mm. era, from 2003-2011. So mm. I have been out there. Um, and I've I ventured into, into entrepreneurship in 2011. Uh, my f last uh, formal employment was, was uh, October of 2011. Mm -hmm. And then I just started off like, you know, a lot of young people, supplies. And then I said, you know what, everybody's doing supplies. So I, want to, I wanted to do something that is more me. Mm -hmm. That's when the whole motivational speaking, mentoring, coaching um, side of things started. Mm -hmm. I've heard your voice on radio. What are you doing on radio? Yeah, I used to do a show on Dumai FM. Um, we do our life at its best. Um, mm -hmm. I was the, one of the anchors for... It's a lifestyle um, family show uh, sponsored by the, uh, our church, the Seventh-day Adventist Church. Mm -hmm. yeah, what happened to the show? Um, unfortunately, because of COVID, um, obviously we had to reprioritize and... Uh, there wasn't enough to go towards um, sponsoring the show because it was self-funded. Mm -hmm. So it's it's on hold at the moment. But you know, once things get back to normal, we should be able to resume mm -hmm. um, the show. What about academically? What's your background? Um, I did sales and marketing. Um, I'm one of those who took shortcuts in life. Um, I did two years of my varsity doing marketing management, and I felt you know varsity wasn't for me. And then I just you know got straight into business. Uh, mm. So I'm a sales and marketing guru if i may if i may okay yeah. now let's now talk about the um, understanding your why we're going to talk about the subject of shifting one's paradigm and the importance of paradigm shifting perhaps before we talk about understanding your why we could just help the viewer understand why this is an important topic and why you're attracted to it thank you so much Remogobi. you know in life we we make choices on a, on a daily basis. And one of the choices that I made in the past was to eat. I ate a lot of food and I ate the wrong food. And in the process, I, I became big. You know, my, my biggest um, uh, weight was 115 kg. Mm. So I came to a point where I said, you know Isn't what? Isn't that an ideal weight for a heavyweight boxer? For a heavyweight boxer, yes. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> a guy who trains big, yes. That, that's, that's, that's the ideal weight. Mm. But when you are... When you do very little activity, it's not good for you. So I, I, I stopped going to the gym and everything. So I was just eating, 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 and then you know became this big guy. Mm. So yeah, I got into that point where I said, Ish, health wise, I wasn't the fittest of people, and I decided to to embark on a lifestyle transformation journey. Mm. And and this came about. I was a regular blood donor, so I, I went to donate blood as I usually did. And the lady who was helping where me. Where was to, this? 
go blood transfusion. Yes. Era. After 20 odd years of donating blood, the very first time in 2015, I was told I was overweight and unhealthy. So my blood was not good enough to be used or transfused. It could not save a life. It could not save a life. Mm. And th that hit me so hard that I actually took that afternoon off and I went home. Um, you know, kids are got it as a dream because what basically this lady was saying was it mainly because of the cholesterol content or what? Um, I, I was on the borderline of everything from, mm. from what she was saying. But that she she said to me, just be very careful. So I had to then go to my my, my GP uh, and then consulted my GP, um, Doctor um, Buang Kopano, and then she said to me, you know what, you are you're on the borderline of cholesterol, of diabetes, hypertension, everything. So that was a a, a red flag for me and mm -hmm. I decided you know something needs to be done mm -hmm. hence the transformation journey that I I started of now saying something needs to be done and when you say understand your why why is the why important you cannot do anything in life without understanding why you want to do it and what you want to achieve mm -hmm. so as with everything in life the why is very important why do I want to lose weight why do I want to transform? Why do I want to change? Mm. Once you can answer that, it becomes easier for you to be able to do anything and everything that you want to do in life. So the why is very important because that's where the answer is basically. So in your case, was the why to be able to donate blood or was the why to be able to attend your grandchildren's wedding? You hit it on the nail. Mm. Um, that was what I wanted, to live long, mm. to be able to marry my children, and attend their weddings mm. and to be um, a well of wisdom like what you're currently doing you, you're actually building up for the future you know our children and great grandchildren are going to be feeding from these podcasts mm. so it, it was a point of saying uh, do i want to die before 40 mm. or do i want to live till 80 90 or as and when the lord leads mm. so to me that was my why to say i'm not i'm not ready to die now mm. i want to live a legacy i want to change lives I want to transform mm. uh, people's lives. And that was my why. What was the main culprit? I mean, you've always struck me as a guy who lives a, a decent life. What was the main culprit that led to, to this situation? Because as a, as they, SDA, Seventh-day Adventists, they, they, they're very emph they emphasize the health talk, the health, live, health lifestyle. Yeah. So what was the culprit in your case? Um, it's very funny because I, 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 I was a vegetarian, I think once or twice. I, I really, it, growing up, I was, I was a very health conscious person, mm. but I guess when I started working, that's when things kind of changed, you know, as a young man, started working at 19, um, you know, my first job and then went to varsity and then came back and then, you know, I had this huge salary working for, um, British American tobacco, um, Everything was just simple and easy. My parents and my 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 siblings were were taking care of my parents, so I wasn't supporting my parents, but I was actually helping them there and there. Mm. So I just got off track and then just ate anything and everything. Mm. I was happy basically. Mm. So that's where the problem was. Happiness kind mm. of drove me so off what track. What was the setup at American Tobacco? How, how did you get paid? Was it on commission? No, no. I had a basic salary. I, I was the country area rep. Mm -hmm. So back then, uh, years of 1999, 2000, my basic salary was three and a half thousand pula mm. um, with a company car, with a company credit card. Mm. As a young man, mm -hmm. you know, fresh from, from school, you, you can imagine. Yes. You know, <laughs> I was I was and big were guy. Were you selling tobacco? Um, we were more on the, on the, on, on the, 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 the setup was that the wholesalers mm. and distributors like Global Holdings were actually the ones distributing the tobacco. Mm. I was just made, I was more on the relationship side mm -hmm. of, of things. So I was just making sure that the product goes out to market um, in a proper way, mm -hmm. um, remove all the, the, the damaged stock, the expired stock, mm. and putting up uh, cigarette dispensers and vending machines. So I was more on the marketing um, mm -hmm. and sales side of, of the business. Okay. Era. So um, after you met um, Dr. Buang, what then happened? Yeah, that, that was the light bulb moment um, because she, she pretty much said you're on the borderline of cholesterol, of diabetes, of hypertension. Mm. This is where now the real KB came into, into effect. Mm. This, is my, this is where my creative juices started saying, you know what, you've always motivated people, but you've never taken it to another level. Now... I, I then sat down and I said, you know what, it took me a while to gain this weight. 
and I don't expect to lose it overnight. It's going to be a journey. It's going to be, it's going to be long because uh, she said to me, my ideal weight is anything between 75 and 78. Mm. I was 115 kg, way above mm. my, my ideal weight. Given your height, this is G- the body, body uh, BMI, something body index. Error. BMI, uh, yeah. Yeah, body mass index. Yeah, body mass index. Error. Mm. You know, they looked at the age, the weight and all that. So they said, you know what, you need to be at most at 80. Mm. So I was over 30 kg above my normal weight. Mm. And then I said, you know what, I think this is where now I can actually put my motivational speaking to practice. Mm. Because a lot of times as a motivational speaker, you are a motivational speaker yourself. Mm. You know, we, we have a story to tell, but oftentimes people don't believe us because they say, you know what, ah, you guys say stuff that's not doable, that, you know, we want real tangible stuff. Mm. And then I said, okay, I'm going to be a sacrifice. Mm. I'm going to preach a sermon through my life. Mm. So I then put a program together and I said, I'm not gonna, there's nothing wrong with these nutritional health um, um, supplements that people use. I said, being an Adventist, I said, I want to, to go the natural route. Mm-hmm. And I put a program here, yeah, plant-based diet. For six months, I drew up a plan to say, I want to lose uh, 35 kg. Mm-hmm. Tall order. You know, I, I, I went on a plant-based mm-hmm. diet. I started a, a health regime. I hadn't trained in over four years. Mm. So I just said, you know, I'm going to do a kilometer a day and then gradually increase. Mm. So within three months, I was already doing like 15 case every morning mm. and no meat, no starch, strictly plant-based diet. It's unbelievable, Remokhobi. If I can tell you, it took me um, five months to actually lose 30 kg. So I moved ah. from 115 kg to 85 kg. I actually shocked myself. Mm. But then it was also, like I said, a sermon. Mm. I wanted to to preach that with God anything is possible. Mm. You know, when, when your mindset is right, when when you believe in something, mm. it is doable. Yeah. And don't the Adventists have a program? Is it called SMART or something like that? Uh, um, I forgot what it's yes, called. SMART. SMART, mm. SMART, yes. Yeah. Uh, six step, is it five step or six step error? Yeah, they, yeah. They, they do have. Okay. So is, yeah. that what, is that the one you used or something close to that? It's close to that. I think mm. pretty much... The same, but mm. it's just that I, I, I kind of said, you know what, um, my, I want to glorify God through it. Mm. Uh, I guess it's the same because, you know, as well as Adventists, we have the health message. So mine was a health message combined with motivational speaking, mm. combined with showing people what God can do. Mm-hmm. Era. Just let's deal with mind over matter. Yeah. What is the mind saying and what is the matter? Let's, let's understand the, the, that aspect here. You know, mind over matter is a is is, is a very complex um, issue, but at the same time, a very simple thing. Mm. Your mind is telling you, "I can do it. Mm. I want to do it. I want to see my children getting married." Mm. And the matter part of it is saying, "Ah, oh, boss, at 115 kg, mm. you think you can just lose that weight uh, just like that?" Mm. So there's that conflict to say. You start doubting yourself. You start saying, hey, but food is nice. Hey, but do I really need to lose the weight? Mm. And at the same time, you're saying, look at the positives. Look at what you really want out of it. So there's that conflict of saying you can, mm. you can't. Mm. And that, that voice, diabola, just enjoy your food. Mm. Stop trying to lose weight. What are you losing weight for? Mm. You're good as you are. Mm. People know you like that. They like you like that. But mm. I don't like myself like that. Mm. So there's that conflict of do it, don't mm. do it. You can't do it. Mm. You don't have the capability. So it seems to me you went cold turkey. Do you advise people to go cold turkey? What is cold turkey? Just leave it there and there. Stop meat immediately, as opposed to incremental (sighs) reductions. I I would advise, I guess it depends on on your mindset once again. Mm. I I took a a whole month Mm -hmm. of working on on the journey. Mm -hmm. You know, I, I, I journaled it. I put it down on black and white. And then I started telling my mind, listening to positive stuff, listening to, to tapes, uh, you know, telling myself that this is not easy. It's not going to be easy. It took a while. So I, I, wouldn't, I wouldn't recommend an overnight thing. It's, mm. it's a process. Mm-hmm. It's, it has to be gradual. It has to be one day at a step. So mm. I took the whole month mm. working on the mindset because, I mean, I'm a Herrero. Yeah. I grew up eating meat three times a day. And then you say... <laughs> I, would, I, want to, I don't want to eat meat for six months. Mm. <laughs> I mean, 
-hmm. So you started reducing maybe from three to one, and then. And then no, it, no, no, it, it, it was gradual, but I get it the whole month mm -hmm. of psyching myself up. Mm -hmm. So by the time October started, because I September, because I, I went to 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 draw blood transfusion in August. And then September, it was the whole mindset thing. Mm, yeah. And then I, my, my last piece of meat was on the 30, 30, 30th of September. Mm -hmm. So on the 1st of October, I said, this is it. I'm doing it. Yeah. But I had psyched myself okay. for the whole month. You mentioned listening to tapes or CDs. Yeah. Uh, is there anything that comes to mind now that you want to share? Um, I, I want to say to people, look at something that's going to make you grow, that's going to help you get out of the comfort zone. So I listen to a little bit of everything. I mean, I, I listen to the Nuggets. Mm. Actually, I watch the post, po, 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 uh, podcasts. Mm. Um, so I, I won't say I have particular people that I listen to. I listen to what I love and mm. that talks, what talks to me. And that. So, you know, from your T.D. Jakes to mm. your Adventist preachers mm. to uh, all mm. the motivation speakers you can yeah. think of, including yeah. myself, because I've got tapes that I've, I, I, I do listen to. Okay. You know, yeah. okay. Maybe we could just post there and then you explain to people about your motivational speaking career because I know that you have a company called Big Talk yeah. Promotions. Big Talk Communications. Communications, sorry. Yeah. Mm. All right, after, after this journey, mm. I, uh, I, I then say, decided that, you know what, I have a story to tell mm. because initially it was just about losing weight mm. and transforming my life. And, and mind you, I've, I've, I've maintained this weight now for close to this is my sixth year. Although I've, because of you know getting married and uh, growing, you know once you clock forty, things kind of change. So things are a little bit hard. But I'm at ninety. I mean, imagine mm. from nine uh, from one one five mm. to eighty five. Mm. So I've gained like five kg mm. in the past six months. So I've pretty much uh, maintained that. And and man losing is the easiest. Mm. Maintenance mm. is the most difficult part. But anyway, getting back to big talk. Mm. And then I realized, you know what? Here's an opportunity for me to to continue impacting lives, changing lives, and I can do it through Big Talk. And then I registered a company called Big Talk Communications, which basically does um, inspirational, uh, transformational talks. We do team building sessions. Um, we do corporate MCing and the like. Mm. That's when I said, you know what? As much as I'm adding value in people's lives, I also need to make money. So mm. it was like, um, speak the health message but also create a bit of wealth for yourself. Mm. So I then started charging for the wellness days, uh, the team talks, the transformation talks, and what have you. So it's, it's, been, it's, been, it's been doing well. Mm. Yeah. And how, 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 what sort of programs do you have mainly or for, for Big Talk Communications? We, 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 we touch a diverse, um, um, we, we touch on diverse areas, um, from personal development to, to spiritual upliftment stuff, Mm. Uh, to mindset change, uh, to team building, uh, to cohesiveness, mm -hmm. um, emotional intelligence. You know, I've, I've read in, 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 uh, intensively on, on a number of, of, of topics. Mm. Uh, you know, I continue to learn, especially as a motivational speaker, you know, mm. you're constantly reading, researching. I, I do a lot of entrepreneurship um, workshops as well, um, customer service excellence. Mm. So, you know, we touch on, on, on a couple of, 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 of um, wide areas. range of topics, areas, okay. era. Right. Um, inevitably, when you embark on this weight, uh, weight loss program or diet program, you, you can fall off track. Yeah. So, A, did you fall tra off track and what did you do to get back on? The first six months, I wish I could go to that part because I was on fire and I, I, I was strict like that. Mm. But obviously, like I said, you know, and then you said, okay, I've, I've achieved my goal. Mm. Um, you get excited. Yes, I, I have had times where I fell off track, you know, mm. got excited um, because I had achieved my goal. And then I learned something through the process, what we call continuous goal setting. It's good to reach your goal, but thereafter, what happens? So I continuously review my goals. I continuously uh, review the whole transformation journey. Am I going in the right direction? What have you? So I, I did fall off and then I always just picked up myself. I didn't beat myself too hard. I just told myself that, yeah, there are mm. times when I'll be demotivated, when I'll be discouraged because life can toss you around up and down. So it's always just dusting yourself and going back. But um, what I then learned, Remu Hobi, was as, 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 as you grow, mm -hmm. Things change, you know. Marapana, Tata, Nyana, 
exercise, you know, t t time. Uh, now you, you start attending um, Merero, weddings, uh, funerals, and what have you. So, now mm. what I then did is, uh, initially when I started my weight loss journey, I did what, what they call the 80-20 rule, mm -hmm. which is 80% of your eight lo uh, weight loss comes from nutrition or the, from what you eat, and 20% from exercise. Mm -hmm. I practiced that for, for about four years. Mm -hmm. And on, on, on the fifth year, I then said, you know what? I'm hitting 40, it means I'm, I'm no longer young. What I then did is I, I went, um, I devised what they call the 90-10 rule. Mm -hmm. uh, try as much as possible to eat healthy 90% of the time. And I allow for 10% when I visit Remoko, we are Bele Sesua, yeah. you know, be flexible. Mm. So th that's what's working for me now. I can have my chocolate now. I can have my uh, sodas mm. once in a while, mm. you know. You mean in terms of, uh, of of backsliding, quote unquote? Did you go to the point of going back to meat? Era, actually, after, I, after you became vegetarian. Era, I, I do eat meat, but mm. obviously now it's more on on the portions. Although now I'm 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 slowly working. I, when I got married, my wife was uh, introduced me to the ve uh, vegan lifestyle, mm -hmm. and that kind of worked for me. And I realized what. It, yeah, I think I can do without meat. Mm -hmm. um, I, I'm, I'm not big on, on meat as I used to. These days I would eat your 100 grams, but once in a while. Because mm -hmm. all I'm being strictly vegan, so it's only when we go out, when I go out, I'll have a piece of meat. Or when I feel like, you know what, let me visit one mm -hmm. of your restaurants and have a steak. Mm -hmm. Then I'll have that. But I think with, with time, I want to be a vegan. I think the vegan lifestyle is, mm -hmm. is the way to go. Health-wise, okay. you feel lighter. And, and there are a lot of... Um, substitutes um, for nowadays meat. Yeah, yeah. for meat, yes, like uh, soya and so on. Although I'm not big on the soya, um, why is it? Anything processed is not good for you. Mm -hmm. I, I like I I I I love the natural organic stuff. You yeah, know? yeah. I eat mostly what is closest to to natural as possible. Mm -hmm. Era, because it's the, there are those who might argue some of these things are so heavily processed. Absolutely. They are worse than the meat itself. They are worse than the meat, yeah. That, yeah. That, 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 that's what I believe in Can as well. Can someone say that about soya? In its natural form. Yeah, that I? it's worse than meat if, if it's, if it's processed. processed. Yes, yeah. mm. uh, uh, yes, 100%. Mm. 100%. If, if you want soya, it, uh, eat it in its natural state. Okay. Uh, just eat the beans and then you're sorted. Okay. Now, um, in terms of your, 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 your motivational work, yeah. do you help with diets now? Are you in a position where you help other people? And if so, tell us about that. Era. Um, I have designed a lot of programs for individuals, for groups. I've worked with a lot of teams where I designed, um, obviously working with, with, with doctors, because I'm not a doctor. Mm. So I work with a lot of health professionals. I said to them, um, I have a solution. The solution is go back to what God recommended, the plant-based diet. Exercise, drink water, and then you're sorted. That's mm. what worked for me. And that's what I preach. Mm. But I always caution people, you need to go to the doctor because what worked for me won't, won't necessarily work for you because of health reasons and what have you. Mm. So era, I do help people provided they've checked with their, with mm. their doctors first. Okay. Yeah. But isn't there, isn't there a general, you know, as you said, God has given us a diet. Isn't there one that fits all? I mean, if you avoid meat and you exercise and you eat, Vegetables, isn't that a one? A one? Yes, it, it's yeah. a one size fits all. I mm. mean, the the, the, the plant-based diet, that's what God recommended uh, originally, and mm. that's what has worked for many people. And that's where the world is going nowadays, the vegan lifestyle route. It, it's perfect. So mm. it, it's a good thing. But I get out tell people have hidden stuff. But me... What do you mean hidden stuff? Some... Uh, okay, I'll give you an example. There, there was one um, pastor's wife who didn't eat meat for the longest time. Mm. And then she started feeling unwell. And, you know, the doctor asked her if she, she ate meat. And she says, no. And says, the problem is on the meat. Mm. And after 15 years, she was asked to go back to, to eating meat because she had a deficiency in something, something. I don't know if she mm. couldn't get in other things. But, yeah, like I said, it's, it's because always the good. The vegetables are not the same as before. They've also been Absolutely. tempered with. Absolutely. And there's also issues of uh, fertilizers and yes. whatnot. Yeah. Yes, yes. That's it. You know, we need to go organic. And mm. then the best way is to make sure you have your own backyard mm. so that you are 100% sure that what is in those vegetables won't kill you or won't harm you in any way. Mm. Yeah. All right. Now, COVID-19 and its impact. How has it impacted your business? 
and how has it impacted your journey uh, in terms of your paradigm shift that we spoke of? Yeah. Um, COVID-19 as a pandemic has, has hit every home, every business. At the beginning, it was very hard, you know, we're, we're closed behind doors. I tried doing, um, you know, virtual team buildings, trainings, and the uptake wasn't that good in the initial stages. Mm. So what I then did is I just did free gigs just to get myself out there. Mm. But what I realized, there was a lot of, there were many people who wanted counseling. So I, I did a lot of online uh, counseling and motivational talks. You know, and, you know, at the beginning it was for free, like I said. And then later I said, you know what, guys, but I have to survive as well. Mm. So, I, you know, let, let's meet halfway. Mm. It's the new normal. Yeah. Yes, you need help. I, I need to be fed. Mm. Let, let's come up with a structure that's going to favor us both. Mm. So it, it then started growing from there, where now people said, you know what, we need these services and we're willing to pay for them mm. because we're in a crisis. So I was broken going through that process, but at the same time, I, I had to be creative and come up with broken, something. Broken, but not broke. <laughs> broken, but not broke. No, but broke as well, but <laughs> error, but yes. Yeah. yeah. Um, so it, 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 it kind of made me look out. Um, during your growing days, mm. they said you must think outside the box. Yes. In our generation, we're saying, throw the box away. You don't need All the together. box. So I, I agree. I threw the box away here and I said, you know All what? together, yeah. Hey, how, do, how do we make money when I'm at home? I have a phone, I have internet. Mm. Let's let's see how, how mm. this thing works. Mm. And obviously, a lot of our programs were now centered around how to navigate through COVID, mm. how to bring teams together, how to align employees with and then, you know, things started. So we're, we're working on some nice okay. projects. Because there are people who talk even of a COVID dividend. In other words, an advantage from COVID. Do you see a dividend? Uh, absolutely. It, it's just that it has been slow on our side. But I, I foresee a, a good last half of the year mm. and a good 2022. Mm. Because, um, you know, things are starting to open up. Because mm. I think one of the key issues I had, contrary to a lot of people, including yourself, who, who do a lot of virtual trainings, Mm. Our uptake was a bit slow mm. on, on the virtual side, mm -hmm. but uh, the few that we did were, were fine. But mm. we did more um, uh, physical trainings than than the, the, the virtual ones. Mm. But now that the headcount is slowly uh, improving, Coming back. Uh, people are, I think are starting to book us now. Is it 50 people per room now? The law has been adjusted. Like we're it. back to 50, so mm. we're getting more of, of those. I mean, the past two weeks, we've been quite busy. Doing, doing a couple of uh, physical trainings. Okay. Um, when you read the Bible, you see that there are a lot of heroes of ours who had to overcome great odds. Yeah. And, um, you know, obviously as a man of faith, um, I'm just wondering what you do when all the odds are against you, you know, uh, when they're stuck against you, stacked up against you. Um, I, I, I get my inspiration from, from the Holy Word, um, you know, I always say to people, when I chose to follow God wholeheartedly, mm. I had more challenges than when I wasn't following Him wholeheartedly. Mm. The, the devil doesn't like good things. The devil doesn't like to see people impacting other people, people doing good. So th there have been a lot of challenges, mm. especially when I was trying to to grow the business and to get it, you know, in, in the continent and, and internationally. Mm. But you know, God's word. You know, one of one of the one of my favorite verses in Jeremiah 33, verse 3, it says, Call on to me, and I will answer thee, and I will show you great and mighty things mm. that thou knowest not. Mm. That that has been my pillar verse. Mm. And then Luke 1, 37, with God nothing is impossible. Yes. So, you know, I, I draw strength from, from experiences of, of, of Paul mm. um, and Silas in prison, mm. um, of Job. Mm. And, and and another one that I just saw much love the three young Hebrew boys. Mm. You know that in short, mm. um, the, the, you know the, the part that I love is when when, when they were called to King Nebuchadnezzar and he mm. said to them, "Is it true what I hear about you guys?" He said, "You know what, King, we're not going to answer you in that." You know, and I'm paraphrasing it. Mm. They say we respect you as a, as an earthly king, mm. but when you go against God, there's no way we're going to bow down to you. We know that our God. Mm is able and capable of delivering us from this fiery fairness. But, but... Even if he doesn't. Even if he doesn't. Not because he can't, 
not because he doesn't have the capability. If he chooses not to, mm. we will still not bow down. Mm. And that's what kept me going. <laughs> even if I don't have money, even if there's no business, mm. I know God will provide. And I've never gone a day without food because mm. God has seen me through the worst, the best, and all the times. Yeah. yeah. And, and what would you say was the lowest point for you? Not necessarily COVID-related, beyond the, the, the incident with weight, but what would you say was the lowest point? Um, is during my supplies days, we did a lot of business um, in the mining sector, medical, and, and just general um, 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 uh, supplies. But our, our two main was, was medical and, and mining. Mm. A young man uh, running, back then, good enough business, we're making like 450K monthly turnover. Wow. You know, I had a staff complement of 13. I traveled the world. I saw everything and anything. Unfortunately, I was not risk averse. I mean, I was a salesperson, and as a salesperson at school, we were taught you make money, you make money by by spending money. Mm. So I spent, and I think I lost shift and focus a little bit. Uh, I didn't let the accountant, who was um, um, competent in his area, to run all the financial stuff. Mm. There was a, uh, um, a, a, um, a consignment or procurement we're doing through an Indian uh, supplier. And mm. this guy had supplies, supplied us for a good two years. So we had created a relationship. I met him in Dubai once or twice. Mm. We were taking care of everything, you know, and I wanted to pay this. He would say, no, don't worry. Mm. You know, we had a, an okay relationship. So mm. here's a job, 1.5 million pula. Boom, I wire the money. Uh, full amount. Full amount, yeah, okay. because we we're, were always sent him money and mm. would get our stuff. Mm. Unfortunately, this time around, it was something not within his portfolio, so he was outsourcing it, and I think something went wrong there. Mm. Boom! 1.5 million pula gone. The guy's nowhere to be seen. Mm. The stuff came. He defrauded you, didn't he? Pretty much. Mm. And I never, I never got help. I mean, I went to the Indian High Commission. I never got help. I went to um, uh, Business Bazaar. When it was still him, I never got help. What so the long Interpol? and short of it, I don't know. I didn't go to Interpol. But yeah, 1.5 million pula, boom, mm. gone down the drain. That that was my lowest mm. because here I have debts, um, growing as a young person, building houses, trying to get my portfolio on track, and then I lost everything that I've ever worked for. Mm. So I had to basically start from scratch. Mm. And and what what sustained you through that period? Prayer, um, fasting, mm. and and family. You know. This is where I really appreciate my family. I'm one of the most blessed people, Remo mm -hmm. I've got a very supportive family structure. Mm -hmm. My mother, my father, my wife, my siblings, and just people around me. I've got a, a few people that will tell me the honest truth that will, even if I've messed up, they will tell me that. Mm -hmm. So family is, a, is, a, is, is, is big on, 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 on my side. Yeah. You, you talk of the importance of celebrating little wins. Yeah. Uh, um, is this something you put in a tape or in a book? I can't remember. <laughs> celebrating uh, little wins. You, you wrote a book or you did tapes? Yeah. You did tapes. Tapes, yeah. yeah. Tapes, yeah. Talk about that. Yeah. Um, you know, oftentimes we want to wait for, for that big tender, that, that big ten around. Mm. I say it's a little things. You lose one kg, you celebrate. Mm. You make 100 pula, you celebrate. And then don't just stop there. And like I said earlier, continuous goal setting. So it, it, it keeps you going because you appreciate that you've put in effort and then you want to work harder and then you're going to beat that target every delay and then it, you go on further mm. and further. So let's learn to celebrate the little wins in life. Mm. Well, let's give examples. Uh, what little wins are we talking about and how did you celebrate them? Um, you know, weight loss. Mm. You know, I, I lost one kg. Mm -hmm. That was a milestone. Wow. Mm. And then five, and then 10, mm -hmm. 20, mm. and then boom, 30. And how you did know? you celebrate? I, I celebrated by giving God the glory because I, I couldn't do it on my own. Mm. I, you know, the, I, I wanted to do and And during that, that, that transition, uh, Whitney Houston, uh, Whitney Houston Brown, who's our relatives from the US, <laughs> <laughs> came up with, uh, with a song, I Didn't Know My Own Strength. Mm. That song gave me the strength mm. to go on. Mm -hmm. So she just encouraged me, because every morning when I was jogging, I'd, I'd bring on the headphones and says, I didn't know my own strength. When things changed, that's when I realized what I could do it. Mm. So 
it's the little one kilometer, two mm. kilometer that mm. I celebrated. And then business-wise, when I started all over again, you know, my first tender, uh, I was used to a big and I tend to big tenders, and all of a sudden, uh, I get 20,000, you're like, wow, mm. and then 100,000, you're like, wow, mm. you know, and I'm not saying, no, can make it to 1 million, 5 million, 10 million, mm. the little, the little 20,000 pula mm. builds into a funnel, 20,000, mm. 5 times 5 is 100,000, mm. 100,000 times 10 is a million, mm. so that's how I basically learned yeah. how to celebrate yeah. the little wins. Wow, wow. There. The power of the mind, um, there's, a, there's a guy called Keho, I think that's his yeah. name, who talks about the, the power of the mind and has written books on this. Uh, is this what you are alluding to when you talk of the power of the mind? The, the power of the mind basically is a combination of my spiritual experience, my experience with people um, that I counsel, that mentor me, that I exchange notes with, to say what we're capable of is far beyond what we've imagined or can think of. Once you can tune your mind into believing. There's a verse that said, the eye has not seen, the ear has that's not heard. It. Neither has it entered the heart of yes, man. man. What, what, Absolutely. what, what is it? Absolutely. Mm. And that's what I was alluding to, to mm. say, don't underestimate yourself. Mm. You, you need to start somewhere, but you need to believe, you need to have faith. Mm. But above all, you need to take the first step. Because mm. dreaming is the easiest thing. Everybody can dream. And, you know, I remember a couple of years ago, you, you were only dreaming of, of this place mm, mm. you know the first thing was to acquire the plot mm. and then you know it's like okay let me do other projects mm. that will eventually build into this yes it's one step at a time mm. no one saw that vision it was only you <laughs> and obviously after that your wife but mm. then others say, ah can they remove a winner real so mm. that's what i'm alluding to to say you know it's mm. one day at a time step by step mm. well this one is a bit of a downer that passion and excitement can die down. Mm. And indeed, I think uh, if it's Anthony Robbins has, yes. has, has been asked the question that, you know, you motivated me, but it didn't last. Mm. And uh, he responded by saying, uh, but you're having your three meals a day. Yeah. You know, why, why don't you say you ate once and that's it? <laughs> so uh, I don't know how your what your take is about the power of, uh, you know, the, you know, keep the, when the excitement, the fire burning and the yeah, passion. keeping it burning, and how to deal with the passion itself or the excitement dying. Self-reflection is very important. Mm. Um, you know, we need to be honest with ourselves. We live in a real world. We, we will get discouraged. Uh, people often ask me, we've never seen you angry, we've never seen you hurt. And I said, you know what, if I ever have to show you what I go through, you wouldn't believe it. Mm. I go through hell, but it's the, it's, it's the mindset, it's the mm. outlook that I want to give. Mm. And it's what I do behind closed doors. Mm -hmm. That's important. Um, being a Christian, once again, you know that we can dream all we, we want, we can make plans, but the best plans come from the Lord. Mm. So that to me says to me, plan, work hard, but understand that things can change, but it's what you do when things are not going well. Mm. So I fuel myself to say, hey, but so and so, things didn't go well. But so and so, on the flip side, was able to turn things around. But so and so, it took him a while to reach where I want to go. So it's it's, it's all about fueling yourself, um, you know, reigniting that passion every single morning. Just mm. like when you wake up every morning and say, thank you, Lord, for yet another opportunity. We lost a lot of people in July due to COVID-19. Mm. Many people. The whole yeah, July was a what, terrible month. It was a terrible month. Mm. So waking up these days, you say, God, thank you for yet another opportunity. And then you do a bit of... I, I wake up at 5 between 4.30 and 5, 5 a.m. every morning, the first thing I do is to give thanks to God and say, I'm thankful for this opportunity. And then I set the tone for the day. I mm. start saying, what did, I, what did I plan for yesterday? What didn't I achieve? And why didn't I achieve it? So self-reflection and continuous goal setting mm. is what keeps me going to say, what happened happened, but what did I learn from my mistakes? Mm. So in other words, you make sure that the passion doesn't die, right? Yes. The excitement doesn't die. And you reignite it. You reignite it. It's, it's a continuous thing. It, mm. it, it, there are times when, like I said, I walk off and I'm like, mm. do I really want to pursue international speaking? Mm. Ah, it's going to take a while. I'm gonna, how am I going to break through the international market? But I was like, you know what? Mm. I, I started off just doing it for free. Now I'm paid to talk. Mm. I can talk anywhere and everywhere. Mm. So, And how are you doing in that, in that regard, international speaking? Are um, you breaking through? 
Not as yet, I think because COVID. I, I was doing very well, as you speak in South Africa a lot, and, and I was playing other countries just before COVID hit. Mm. So now when things are a bit, you know, getting not normal, but getting better, mm. um, I'm, 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 I'm starting to talk to my uh, mm. partners again internationally to say, you know, are there any other opportunities? But I, I just got a, a call um, two days ago to, 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 um, to, to moderate um, an international webinar. It's going to be hosted here in, in just over a week's yeah. time. So, yeah, oh, okay. Yeah. People in Nigeria and in, and in, in, in Uganda uh -huh. and elsewhere. Awesome. But it will be online. Yeah. So okay, so I get it. Oh, awesome. Yeah. yeah. Using your predicaments to make money, um, that's something you did, isn't it? Yeah. Mm. yeah. And, uh, and how, what would you advise youngsters and, and other people, uh, entrepreneurs who are watching? I, th I think we, we, you know, we are one of the most privileged people as a nation, Botswana. Mm. You know, everything is pretty much available for us. You know, if you want to start a business, you have all these financial institutions that are funded by government and private sector. You know, we have mentors like you. We have people that are willing to help people and what have you. Mm. So I always say to you, if you're going to sulk and cry, no one is going to help you. But if you come to Remokobi, with a problem and a solution, he's able to listen to you. Mm -hmm. Equally, I have sat down and said, you know what, how can I make money in these trying times? Mm -hmm. And I said, speaking is the way to go. More than ever before, I need to really ignite that passion and come up with, with, the, with, with the topics and programs that are geared mm -hmm. to helping people navigate through COVID-19. So, yes, they, 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 there's an opportunity in every uh, predicament that one faces. Mm. And then in terms of uh, your own situation with the weight loss yeah. and uh, losing the 1.5, um, are you able to actually point to how the predicament has turned to a current success or into, I think uh, it's Napoleon Hill who says inside every uh, adversity yeah. there's a promise of a greater blessing. Absolutely. Uh, from the weight loss, it will be obviously be being paid to tell people how to eat right and how to change their lifestyle. So that has been the blessing from the, the, the weight loss. And then through that as well, um, Cabello Brown Speaks was born to say, I'm going to focus solely on speaking. And what I do is just to motivate, to inspire, to encourage, and to uplift people. On, on, the, on the loss of the 1.5 million uh, it was more now being risk averse, now knowing that it is important to let experts do what they're good at and what they're paid for. Mm -hmm. So I have uh, legal, um, legal uh, buddies, uh, financial buddies that I bounce things on. So everything now is done by the book. I don't take any risks. Mm -hmm. So I'm a more risk averse and shrewd businessman now because mm -hmm. I learned the hard way. You take risks, but they're calculated. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. And through that, I was able to do consultancy work as well to advise people to avoid the loopholes that I went through. I fell in those huge dips. So I'm going to say, guys, mm. it's well and good to run a business. You, we get excited. Because when we are about to run, it's zero. I don't want to go to five million. Mm. Or I will lose compliance because you are thinking of five million. Mm. Basic stuff. They're saying, you already have these documents in your office. Mm. Please submit these mm. and then now work on what we want. Mm. And you can't even give them text clearance Something that you already have in the office. Mm. So that was another opportunity to say, once I share my story, people will believe me and people will know this guy has been there, done that, seen it all. So he comes more informed and we're able to listen to him. Yeah. 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 So what is the relationship between uh, the Gabriela Brown Communications or Big Talk Communications and Gabriela Brown Speaks? Um, Big Talk Communications is more of, it, it houses a number of, it's more like Mukhobi Incorporated. It has all these little facets under it. At Big Talk Communications, we do team building. We do the motivational talks. But I can also engage people, you know, I can call Remukhobi, say, Remukhobi, here's a job, are you available? Um, here's an opportunity for you, take it up. Team building, I can collaborate with certain people. Um, strategy, I can collaborate with different people, you know, Janja. Whereas Cabello Brown speaks is me, self. Mm -hmm. yeah, I won't invite you to go and talk on behalf of Cabello Brown speaks because mm -hmm. that's the brand specific to me okay. and my thinking. Because 
Well, big talk, I can let you be free and talk about what Remokobi wants to talk about because as long as I said, you know, this is what the client wants, so you run with it. Okay. It's your baby. So you collaborate with, with several speakers on big talk? Uh, not only speakers, but uh, several strategic partners because what I realized at Remokobi, and uh, when I reflect four or five years ago, I, I've made more money um, through strategic partnerships than being alone because at times I'd get an opportunity I'm not well vested in, in legal stuff. And I say, Remo Kobe, I've packaged this thing for a client. I'm not a legal guy. How can we work together in this deal? It's worth 500,000. Tell me what you, what you can do for me. Package it proper. Tell me what you want. Take what's yours. I take what's mine. And then move on. And then tomorrow you continue with what you do. I continue with what I do. If there's another opportunity, I'll call you. Let's sit down, talk, agree on, put, put everything in black and white. Super wow. error. So that, that, that's what's been working for me. Obviously, a role model, um, and that can bring a bit of pressure. Um, how do you cope with the pressure of being a role model and having so much, um, so much focus? I mean, I know that you have preached, you, you preach, you have peeled the pulpit in church. Uh, you've interpreted when I was preaching, and yeah. you've preached on your own several times. I know that you mentioned the radio show, yeah. and then Kabbalah Brown speaks and big talk communications. So there's a huge spotlight on you. So my question is, how do you cope with that pressure? Hey, uh, Romo, it's one of the most difficult. And I, I really uh, enjoyed a lot of pressure when I was doing um, news. Uh, I used to do the business segment at BTV um, 2009 to 20, I think 14, 15, thereabout. Mm -hmm. You know, people don't let you be yourself. Being in the public space is, is, is pressure on itself. At church, they, you know, these little ones see you as a, as a role model. They, 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 you know, they're always talking about you, mommy, I want to be like Uncle KB, I want to do this. So your parents tell you, you know, these children are looking at you, you know, you're a good role model. And it's like, yo, I must be very careful where I go, what I say, what I do. Mm -hmm. So it keeps you on your feet to say, it puts you on check, basically, mm -hmm. to say, be careful. There are a lot of people. So it's a good thing and a bad thing. Good mm -hmm. thing in the sense that it keeps you on check and on the right track. Bad thing that at times, it's unnecessary pressure because you can't be yourself. Mm -hmm. When I go out, I have to make sure that I'm looking well-dressed because people, when I speak, uh, people expect me to say this because he's a professional in this area. Mm -hmm. So <laughs> it's a very dicey one. But at the end of the day, mm -hmm. it, it, it really helps you mm -hmm. to, to be steadfast and to be exemplary mm -hmm. because you know that many people following you are uh, taking a lot of um, um, pointers from you. Okay. Yeah. So... Um... And, and inevitably, you'll have one or two slip-ups. I wonder how you deal with that in, in, in the glare of the public. Hey, um, I, I had a terrible one uh, just before I got married. Uh, but it's, 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 I think this is not the right platform. But yeah. I, I, I kind of overreacted. Mm -hmm. uh, and it was a, in a church setting. Mm -hmm. And people misinterpreted it big time. But, you know, you, you could have chosen a, a different platform to address your grievances or whatever you. Mm. So, you know, yeah, we're human at the end of it. No, in church. Okay. Yeah. Era. Just, was it an outburst? It was an outburst and, you know, it could have been dealt uh, differently. Uh, unfortunately, it was to show that despite being a public figure, despite being a man of God, despite being all these many things and wearing different hats, mm. I'm a human at the end of the day. Yeah. I can lose it. You know, but people came to me and said, as a motivational speaker, we expected a lot from you. Mm. As, a, as a preacher of the word, we expected men a lot from you. Mm. As a role model, we expected a lot from you. Mm. And some actually bashed me and some criticized me and all those. But I was able to sit down and say, you know what? I could have done it differently. Mm. But hey, it happened. It happened. It's water under, 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 the, thing, under the bridge. Mm. And you moved on. And I moved on. And you were able to walk past it. Absolutely, because I forgive myself. Yeah. Uh, people will always talk Remo um, There's a story that I like. Uh, I don't know if you might have come across it. They say there was an old man um, and his grandson. They were, the, the old man was riding a donkey. The young man was walking by his side. Yeah. They met a group, a group of people. And then people say, what kind of old man is this? So heartless. I mean, he's on the donkey and this young boy is walking by his side. Mm -hmm. Oh, that's so hard. It's not so like an old man, mm. you know. Then because of the people, they changed. Mm. 
the young men got on, on, on the donkey, the old men walked by his side. They journeyed on. They met another group of people. They said, this young man, he's disrespectful. How can he make this old man walk when he's on the donkey? And then they switched again. Both of them got onto the donkey. They journeyed on. They met a, uh, a group of people. And they said, oh, these people are so heartless. How can they overburden the donkey? You know, what kind of people are two of them on the donkey? And the old man got really angry now. And then he carried the donkey. The young man walked by his side. So it's basically to say, people will yeah, always talk. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Ah, idiot. You know. So from that, what's the moral of the story? Moral of the story is people will always talk. You, do, you don't do anything, people talk. You do something, people talk. You just sit at home, people talk. So don't listen to people. Do mm. what you feel is right and what's good for you and then move on. Unfortunately, as as that's how life is. As long as it's not breaking the law. That's as long as it's not breaking the law. As long as it, you're happy and not breaking the law. Most mm. important. Yeah. yeah. All right. Let's talk about um, crystal ball in terms of if you look at that ball, look into the future, 5, 10, 15 years and what you'd have God do for you. Uh, where do you see Big Talk Communications? Where do you see Cabello Brown Speaks? Um, I'm actually working on a, on putting all my, my companies under one group, mm. a brown group of companies, because mm. I really want to, to employ people. Um, but above all, is to change lives. Mm -hmm. So as I, as I talk to God and as I fast and meditate, I see myself talking internationally like I've always wanted. It's not about the fame, but it's about impacting people. Mm -hmm. So um, I'm starting to get engagements now in, in, in the continent. And then hopefully by next year, it will be now internationally. Mm -hmm. So I am working on, on that. And, and obviously strategic collaborations across borders as well. So that's where we're pretty much looking at mm -hmm. because I, I, I feel I've grown as a person, I've grown as a businessman, I've, I've learned a lot of uh, tricks in the, in, in, in the industry, and I continue to learn every single day. So it's now to sell Botswana, to sell a product in Botswana internationally. So that's pretty much where we see ourselves mm. um, with strategic collaborations and partnerships all over the world. Wonderful. So to the point of having branches? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. We're actually opening one uh, very soon, but we'll announce that um, just across the, one of the borders mm. nearby. We're setting up an office there, so we, 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 we are um, working at an that. advanced stage to, right. to, to, to cross borders. Okay. This is the time you can ask me a question, sir. Ira, um, thank you so much. Um, uh, I just wanted to get some... Ad how would you advise a young man, like, I don't know if 40-odd is, is young, mm. <laughs> but, yeah, somebody younger than you... Uh, who's trying to, 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 to grow in business. I mean, you, I've just shared with you my story. How mm. would you advise me, mm. especially wanting to, to grow and collaborate and yeah, yeah et cetera? No, I think you're, you're on the right track. Uh, the, 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 um, I get the sense that there's a lot of energy which you are deploying, which you are about to to apply in the marketplace. And I think that you just need to uh, find yourself uh, one or two mentors, yeah. people who, who have walked the journey before you. Uh, I think Warren Buffett sp speak, says the best, is that you look at somebody who, who, who you, you, you wish to emulate, somebody you admire, yeah. and then you reverse engineer what they've done and see whether you can replicate that because success leaves clues. Yeah. So I think that um, uh, you're on the right track. You're not necessarily reinventing the wheel. What you've done has been done before. It's just that it would be doing it the brown way or your own way. So I think it's a matter of just staying the course and, and to keep doing what you are doing. I think uh, you, you have the right energy, you have the right mindset, yeah. and you certainly need to just uh, work on, 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 on you know, having people walk the journey with you. I've, uh, I've got three uh, or four key mentors that I, I use, you yeah. know, I, I, I ask them ideas, I check ideas with them yeah. when there's a challenge. So it's good to have, mm -hmm. to have that network yeah. where you can, you can test your ideas th through other people. Uh, but I think keep on what, doing what you're doing. Thank you. If you are thinking in terms of going global and going regional like yeah. you're planning, yeah. 
I think that's a very good move. Yeah. There's a tendency to be too comfortable being a big pond in a small, mm. uh, you know, a, a big fish in a in small, small pond. pond. Yeah, yeah. Um, so it's nice to go now into the a bigger, a bigger pond or even the sea out yeah. there. So I like. That's one of the things that have come out of uh, COVID. Yeah. But when I'm much more willing yes, than before absolutely. to go regional, to go international, to go out. Mm. And I like that shift that has taken place. Mm. If it's a paradigm shift, it's one that I really welcome. Oh, awesome. Yeah. Thank you yeah. so much for that. Yeah. 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 Okay. Um, look at that camera there. There will be someone who needs words of inspiration, uh, parting words of encouragement from you as we come to the end of our time together. Right. Um, I want to say to you, there's no formula to success in life. Life is what you make out of it. We are all born of flesh and blood. We will make mistakes, costly mistakes at times. But the most important thing is getting up. You can fall seven times, but the eighth time, you just need to, to just wipe yourself and continue moving on. So don't give up. If it's something that you believe in, if it's something that you are passionate about, go do it. Wow. If you want to engage with Big Talk Communications or Cabela Brown Speaks or any of your other companies, give them your contact details, please. All right. Thank you so much. Um, we're currently, our website is currently under, under construction, so very soon you can check it out. Uh, big, uh, it'll be under Cabela Brown Speaks and uh, Big Talk Communications. But if you have any engagements, you want to call us to come and motivate you, to inspire you, you can call me on 73111545 or 72111545. Thank you so much. What about on social media? Social media, um, Carlo Romeo Brown, um, Big Talk Communications is also on Facebook, whereas the others, like I said, are still being sorted out. But yes, you can get me on, on uh, Facebook, um, on Instagram. Um, Mr. Brown is Romeo KB. All right. Thank you so much. You've been a wonderful guest. Sir. Thank you so much, sir. Thank you you've for done, inviting me. You've done a great job. Thank you so much.